Hey David, T.S. Wood here and welcome to My Extra Mile, the Network Marketing Edition. This is a six week series. We're now on week number four. I just want to do the quick reminder, if you're not in network marketing, you still may want to learn these lessons because the world has changed. Everyone is looking to create a side hustle business that they can grow globally, where they can expand their income, expand their mindset, expand their hearts and expand their impact. This is that show. Um, you know, this is really important, uh, the, the, this show. This show is really about the art of follow up. So again, even if you're not in network marketing, you know, whatever you want in life, whether it's a job, whether it's whatever it is, following up is a mindset. And successful people, wealthy people, we all understand the art of follow up and the art of closing or asking for the deal. It's important, it's imperative. And these two ladies are true masters in, in this arena. Um, we're talking about a seven figure income earner and a multiple six figure income earner. I mean, seven oh, earning a million dollars a year in your side hustle business. I mean, that's someone you want to be listening to. So this is the ABCs of selling, how to close like a seasoned pro, you know, and the art of follow up with the incredible Susan Sly and the lovely Abby O'Neill. Who wants to go first? I'll go. All right, Abby, you go first. I'm gonna ask you a question. And the question is, why network marketing? 90 seconds or less, I'm gonna ask this week after week, you're gonna see it every single time, every leader, find out what they say, why network marketing? I will stop you at 90 seconds. Are you ready? Ready. And go. So I believe network marketing is the best career out there because it allows me to be both a mom full time, put my family first, and it allows me to build a badass career for myself. It allows me to step into my power as a woman to create income, to create community, and I don't have to give up one for the other. And when I found that there was a financial opportunity within the network marketing realm that allowed me to be both a mom and a businesswoman and just an incredible version of myself, I was in. There's nothing better in my mind to create income and to build your life upon the network marketing. <laughs> so 41 seconds, look people, 41, 48. Okay, so that's good. All right, so here's the question I just wanna just touch on. You are the mother of three girls and you are Pregnant building a little boy. boy. You have a little boy inside you right now, a little ice baby. So I just wanna make sure that we congratulate you for that. And uh, again, I remember, was it, you, I think you told me about it, three years ago. I had your baby in my arms on stage at the University of Action. So yes. I can't wait to have him in my arms. And yes, let's hope we're together again soon. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to reset this. Susan, you have 90 seconds. You can use all the time, but you can't have one second more. Well, I'm taking my one second to say Abby is building her re-entry position leaders with her kids, which is what I did too. So kudos, mama. So why network oh, marketing? Oh, oh, oh. I haven't asked the question yet. I'm going to push start. Ready? I'm going to get you ready. And why network marketing? Go. A Q2 2020 survey that was released said that 63% of Americans either had a side hustle or were contemplating a side hustle. 49% of people 35 and under in the United States have a side hustle. The top reason to have a side hustle is to pay the bills. Right now we are living in the side hustle economy and for a lot of people their main job isn't enough to cover student loan payments, um, sports lessons, groceries, all sorts of things. So where else, what other profession can you have a side hustle where your results are contingent upon helping other people? Yes, you can be an affiliate marketer, you can go drive Uber, or you can rent out your house for Airbnb and you're going to benefit, but there's nowhere else other than network marketing where your results are 100% contingent on the lives you change. And that's why network marketing and why now. <laughs> Again, you have the whole 90, but 57.45, so well under the 90 seconds. Well, Dave, I'm gonna... No, you're up. David, why network marketing? <laughs> yes! 
All right, why network marketing? I'm gonna push the speaker on here, here. So why network marketing? For me, network marketing has proven itself in my lifetime to be the most beautiful profession on the planet, uh, the kindest, the happiest, the most generous, the most positive, uh, the wealthiest, uh, the most adventurous, the, most, the people who contribute the most to, to individuals and groups and effectively in the planet are, are professional network marketers that I work with. It's a, it's a profession that, to like you just talked about, Susan, that is contingent on growing and helping people. And what happens with that is you feel like you're contributing on such a high uh, vibration, that sounds a bit woo-woo, but on such a high level that when you go to sleep at night, you sleep so deeply and that last breath that you take on the planet Earth, you know that there's a legacy that lives on way beyond a J-O-B. 55 seconds. <laughs> well, well, you know, well. And listen, this is what's great about what we said is that, listen, that I had no idea you were going to ask me that question. There is no pre-planning on this one. So thank you so much for putting me in the hot seat. And that's what real leadership is, right? So Abby, I'm going to ask you again, different question. You have 90 seconds to answer it. And again, you could use the whole 90 or less. Why isogenics? So Isogenics, one, because of the products. They work, there is science to back them, they are proven, and they really changed my life, which allows me to authentically and organically share that with others. The leadership in our company starts at the top. The Coovers, if you don't go, if you don't know them and you haven't looked up who they are and what they stand for, they are the heart of our company. Why Isogenics? Because of the leadership that you're seeing right here. I have looked up to Susan and David since the day I started Isogenics, and now I am able to learn from them and co-create with them. It is a community of like-minded people that believe in collaboration over competition. Why Isogenics? The compensation plan, residual income, friends. It is a compensation plan designed so that I can find success, but the person that I work with five years from now, they can create the same success. We are heart, we are culture, we are family first, and there is nowhere else I would rather be within the network marketing profession besides isogenics. <laughs> 56 seconds. Look at you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Susan? All right. Why isogenics? Well, if, if someone is going to align themselves with a company, let's start with well capitalized. So Isodex is a privately held company. It's done over $8 billion in sales. And Isogenics as a, at the core is not beholden to shareholders. They are accountable to the associates. Of the $8 billion that they've done in sales, they've paid out approximately $4 billion with a B in commissions. So why Isogenics? Number two, Isogenics is a company that pays you weekly, daily, and monthly. Your bills come in weekly, daily, and monthly. So why wouldn't you want to get paid at that time? Number three, our products create visible results. There are eight clinical studies that are peer reviewed that illustrate that Isogenics helps you lose body fat, release weight, feel better, have more energy, sleep better. The list goes on and on and on. Your people that you introduce become your walking, walking billboard. Number four, as Abby alluded to, the training and the leadership. And number five, it doesn't matter when you start, the opportunity is equal for everyone. That's why Isogenics and why now? <laughs> 108. 108. David, David <laughs> I'm going to ask you a different question. David doesn't know what it's going to be. Abby, no idea. No idea. <laughs> we're going to put him in the hot seat. Okay. I have a question for you. All right, let's go. David, you were working as the lead trainer for the number one training company in the world, teaching, teaching on wealth and mindset. You left a very lucrative career to come and create training programs for Isogenics. So why did you choose Isogenics? And why is it that after over a decade, you are still here on your market set and go. 16 years I've been here. You know, Peak Potentials is the company I work with. We were training anywhere from 1,500 to 6,000 people a weekend. They were traveling from around the world to find out about money. Our key program was the secrets of the millionaire mind. And guess what? What I realized after three years of doing that is we had the greatest 
uh, uh, programs on the planet, but people went back to their J-O-Bs, they went back to toxic relationships, their toxic lives. And what I realized is they were lacking a vehicle. They all wanted the same thing. People wanted to have choice, they wanted to have freedom, but there has to be three elements, the right vehicle, the right time, with the right mindset. So when I partnered with Jim and Kathy, they had the right vehicle. It was definitively the right time. Like right now, there's never been a greater time in history to be a part of our profession, to be a part of our company, all right? But the right mindset, this business, Jim and Kathy and Eric, and the entire team is all about growing people. You both talked about it, about why network marketing, because we're in the people growing business. And what I realized was, when we can combine personal development with our professional network marketing, with the right integrity, the right company, which is for me, Isagenix after 16 years and still is, then that's the reason I left and the reason I'm still here. 118.54, 12 seconds to spare. <laughs> hey, as long as I got 12 seconds to spare. Look, let's get on with this. But if you're enjoying this, I, I really, I hope you're here. Remember, this isn't about what you're listening to. What we're all about is results, people. So again, it's not about just writing this down. It's about how you implement this after this training. How do you bring this into your life? So it's not about us you know, teaching you a thousand things. It's about us zeroing in on something and you're not just learning it, internalizing it, making it a part of your DNA and then bringing it to life with practice. We are not uh, naive enough to think you're gonna listen to us and everything will radically change without work and practice and falling down and getting messy, which is leading me to my first question, ladies. I don't know who's gonna take it, but let's talk about the messiness of follow-up. Because for me, when I think about the whole six weeks, the word follow-up is probably the most fundamental and most important thing that I think we can be talking about. Because for me personally, when I say to someone, I'm gonna follow up, this is all about integrity. This for me is I would rather die than break my word. So follow up is something so important. There's something so deep about this. And I'm so glad that I've got you two lovely ladies to talk about this. But let's go there. The messiness of follow up. Who's going to take this one on? Abby, why don't you start first? Okay, perfect. So, oh, you just saying integrity like strikes a chord in me because it is one of my biggest core values. And I think in this business, a lot of times everyone has good intentions and we say we're going to do things and we commit to it, but then we don't follow through with our word. We don't actually do it. And I think a lot of times that's because we're waiting for it to look perfect. We're waiting to have our hair done perfectly to get on a Zoom with someone. We're waiting for everything, our kids to be quiet, everyone to be gone. And the reality is, is this business is built in the messy moments. My business doesn't look like it does on social media with how I actually build. I very rarely am done up and ready to go. I am in the moment, throwing the kids in the car if I need to, taking calls, following up, doing what I said that I would do at the beginning all the time. And I don't do it for someone else. I do it for myself. I show up and I follow through on what I said I was going to do for me because I think that's so important. And you guys, not just the follow-up, the entire build has been messy. And if I had waited for everything to be perfect, I would be exactly where I started right now. I mean, I could tell you stories about following up with people and being so scared about what they were going to say and how many no's that I have gotten and how many times there have been screaming kids in the background where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to blow this. I'm not going to say the right thing. And at the end of the day, none of it mattered because at the end of the day, my heart and my passion and my excitement always shows when I'm having a conversation with someone. And when I'm following up with them, I want people to know that I am the person to come to when they are ready for a solution that Isogenics has to offer. It's not my job to convince someone. It's not my job to tell them why they have to start right now and what they're missing. My job, I believe, is to show up authentically, to stand in integrity that I'm here, I'm never going anywhere, and that when they're ready, I will still be here. So I always continue to follow up even when I hear no over and over and over and over again. It's the follow-ups that I do on social media in the inbox or text message where I have messaged somebody 10, 15 times and I still have zero response from them. I think a lot of us would see that as we're being annoying or we're bothering someone. And I had to get over that because I'm not bothering someone. I'm not annoying them. I am letting someone know that I am here and when they're ready, I will always be here for them. 
And I have a story about someone that I followed up with. It had to have been at least 20 times and not once did they respond to me. They didn't say no. They didn't say go away. They didn't say leave me alone. They didn't say anything. But because I continued to follow up and I continued to show up on social media, living out loud with heart and integrity and just who I am, one day I got a message from that person that said, hey, Abby, I'm ready to go. And they enrolled with a value pack that day. And that wasn't because all of it, it wasn't just because that day they were ready. It's because for so long I had been there and followed up. And I just invite you to not ever make your follow-up about you and your ego and what you're worried someone's going to think of you. Because I promise people don't know what they don't know. And if you are always there and you show up with heart and you love isogenics the way I know you do, you are not doing something to someone. You are there doing it for them. So don't be afraid to just show up when the kids are screaming and everything is crazy and you feel like you're a hot mess. Show up anyways. Well, you say so. You say something there, Abby. I want to jump in because you know the word, the one word that I think it's easy to forget as you become more successful. And in our world, you know, you're an eight star. Which, if you were to put that in dollar sense, just so people have an understanding, I mean, you've got three daughters. You, 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 you've had the like Susan built during pregnancy, post-pregnancy, pre-pregnancy. So it's not like, you know, a lot of people use their children as an excuse not to do it versus a reason to really do it, right? But when you look at, um, uh, you, you personally talked about your, your income. Where's your income at right now? Because this follow-up, and you just talked about that 20 times with zero crickets, and then because you kept demonstrating your integrity, said you would, wasn't taking it personally, wasn't making it about you, you know, just doing the do as it were, um, this person responded that way. And I know you have a lot more stories, but can you give us an idea of your income just so people understand what that looks like? Yeah, there'll be a disclaimer, right? So I make anywhere from 20 There's a disclaimer. I'm disclaiming. Whatever she says, it's because of the hours and the conversations and the work. This is not typical, but it's typical for people to do exactly what she does. All right. So let's put it that way. Susan, you can add to the disclaimer in a second, but Abby. So anywhere from 20 to $40,000 a month right now. All right. Which isn't bad. You're sitting in your bedroom, which I love the fact you're in your I'm bedroom. I'm actually in a hotel room oh. on a vacation right now with my family who's down at the pool. <laughs> well, of course you are. That's awesome. I want to, before I bring Susan in, there's one question I have for you because you talk about this as if it's normal because of my integrity, because of this, because of this, because of living out loud and all these beautiful things that sound like everyone's got. Was there ever a time where you were scared to follow up? Was there ever a time when you heard that word, you were like, you know, you got sick in your stomach and you felt and you took it personally because you made that sound very easy. And we know that a lot of people are sitting there saying, well, I just, you know, I'm scared to send the first text, let alone the 19th one, right? Yeah, so I'm still nervous to send the texts. It doesn't go away. I still get nervous sending the follow-up texts. I still get nervous that I'm going to say the wrong thing. But because I've surrendered to the process of becoming the best version of myself through the training that Isogenics has to offer from watching leaders like Susan and David and so many I could list off, I look at them and when I first started, I said, if they can do it, I can do it, but I'm going to have to be willing to show up in ways that are so uncomfortable every single day. I still feel so new to isogenics right now. Like it's, I feel like a baby in isogenics. <laughs> how, how long have you been in isogenics? So it'll be six years in the new year. Yeah, it's funny because I'm like 16 years in and I still feel like a baby. I look at this I skin. Do. <laughs> I do. And I, I think that people think it's going to go away, that nervousness, and it's going to go away, but... I think you just get better at showing up when you're uncomfortable because you start to see the results that you get when you do show up uncomfortable. Yeah. And trust me, I had people unfollow me. I've had, I have had people tell me to never contact them again, to stop talking about isogenics. And it does, I'm human. It hurts. I do take some of it personally, but I also think about, God forbid the person Joanna didn't share isogenics with me, what my life might look like. And I quickly check myself and say, I'm not showing up for the people that use their words to hurt me, to make me feel bad about what I do or that it's not for them. I'm showing up for the person like me six years ago that this changed my life forever. And I let that fuel me every day when I am uncomfortable, when I don't want to show up, when I get another no or somebody says something that makes me just icky and uncomfortable. I remind myself that that's not who I'm showing up for. 
you get really clear on where you're going and what you want and you let that why drive you more than those that essentially a lot of times you just make them uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna say this publicly, just and I, I know Susan's thinking the same. Like, you are so beautiful. I mean, I just I, no, really, it's just like oozing out of you. And I, I hope that that somebody sitting somewhere in the world, because this is going all over the world, you know, that those words sort of just and if you have to go and replay this and listen just one more time to everything Abby said and make sure you didn't miss. There was so much gold in there. There was so much in there about her humanness and and that it hurts and that it was hard in the beginning and that it was messy and you know and 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 the journey was worth it because of how she's talking internally to herself so thank you abby and susan let's hand this one over to you all right the messiness people look at you right now and i want to remind a lot of people won't know your past but you know you're so accomplished and you know and when we listen to your resume I know how hard you work and how much you give, but how how passionate you are in so many areas of your, of your life. But I, I would argue that if I went back to your day one in isogenics, the person we see today was radically different. Do you want to just sort of touch on your journey with messiness, but a little bit about how you were so people realize that you, you like Abby, were very, very messy in the beginning? Oh, sure. I, live. I want to acknowledge Abby because you know, that the vulnerability and truth of it, where network marketing gets a bad rap, or it's from people who are like, oh, I made all this money and it was so easy. It's not freaking easy, but if someone comes to you with an offer of an easy business, you should run away. Um, the, you know, the reality is of this messiness, David, is that it's, it's still messy. 17 years later, it's still messy. Um, I was following up with a gal I had enrolled many years ago and um, just checking in on her because there are different types of follow-up. There are follow-up with prospects. There are follow-up with past customers. There are follow-up, there's follow-up with existing customers. There's follow-up with existing people who've converted to associate who haven't done anything in a long time. And I was following up with the latter and I found out that, um, you know, she's going through a really rough time. And she said to me, you're only following up with me because I canceled my auto ship. And I, I, I said to her, I'm really deeply hurt and sorry that you would think that that's the only reason I'm checking in with you because it isn't. And, and the reality is that you will be forced to grow in this business or your income won't grow. And where a lot of people quit and it, it gets really messy is because you start to really self-actualize and look in the mirror and things are revealed to you that perhaps you don't like. Maybe you aren't the person in integrity. Maybe you are a gossipy person. Maybe you're a person who tells yourself a lot of stories um, that are very negative or you participate in drama. And then suddenly everything you dislike about yourself it comes up and rears its ugly head in your mirror when you start to do things like follow up. And so I wanna talk a little bit about this journey of follow up and, and what it really looks like. So as Abby mentioned, um, the, you know I've had people who I followed up with and nothing happened, nothing happened. I've had people who I thought for sure were gonna be in my business and they, they told me I was crazy. They said, you're in a pyramid scam, what are you doing? Even my husband's family when we started had an intervention with me and said, you're doing something that's way beneath you and you're embarrassing our family. And they said, if you talk to anyone we know, we will never talk to you again. And so interestingly enough, when I started, I made a list of 75 people. And um, I, I, you know, I had been in professional sales before. I had built the number one producing sales program for the largest health club chain in the world in the late 90s. And I thought, oh, I've got this. This is health and nutrition. This is not going to be a problem. But of the 75 people, only three said yes. And one was my husband, who I signed up without him knowing. So I'm still counting that. <laughs> did he say yes or did he just not no. say no? <laughs> no, he just didn't say no. But, you know, but uh, the, the one that hurt the most was my friend Carl. 
because Carl um, and I trained for triathlon together. I used to be a professional triathlete. And when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I gave up my professional career, but I still trained. And so Carl and I would go on these long training rides and, you know, we would have these deep conversations. And so when Isogenics came along and he was a chiropractor, I thought, Carl's absolutely going to say yes. He said no. He said I was crazy. And, um, and that one hurt. But it's interesting whether you believe in the golden rule, which I do, or you believe in karma, which is a you know what. So recently, someone who was on my initial 75 person list, someone else went to prospect them. And she said, I really regret not joining with Susan because had I done so, I probably would be a millionaire by now instead of trying to figure out how I'm making my mortgage payments. And so this messiness in understanding that that, you know, in the words of Jimmy Smith, some will, some won't, some do, some don't, who's next, but you have to understand the numbers. So in the, in, tr in traditional sales, in the, in, you know, the real world of business, so to speak, the statistic, um, and you can reference this, it's by a company called, out of the UK called Marketing Donut, 80% of sales are made after the fourth follow-up but 80% of salespeople follow up fewer than four times. And people say, I don't want to bother people. Well, in a moment, Abby and I will talk about that, that getting into the right mindset. There were so many times where my kids were screaming or Chris and I had just had a fight. I remember choose me or choose network marketing and I'm crying my eyes out and then I have to get on the phone and follow up. As Abby said, your why has to be at the forefront. Your reason why has to be bigger than your damn excuses. If you're making your family an excuse, then you've got your priorities all wrong. We do this for our family and with our family, not in spite of them. Isogenics, David, you asked me about my journey. My daughter, Avery, her tuition for her whole degree, a marketing degree, she didn't even go to med school, was 250000 US. What paid for that? Isogenics. My kids have all gone to private schools. Now I've got another one in university. What's paying for that? I suggest my children will not graduate with student loans. And I thank God every day for the pain because yes, I've been rejected. I had someone give me death threats. Um, let's see what else. I've had someone threaten to do all sorts of horrible things. I used to run ads in USA Today for my Isagenics business. I had callers who would say they were going to do horrific things to me. Um, I've had people swear at me, ghost me, whatever. Here's my bottom line on follow-up. And I want everyone to write this down. Your critics do not pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've got to say. <laughs> well, hold on, well, hold on. Let, let me show. <laughs> I'll give you a second. Your critics, or say my, don't put your, put my critics, do not pay my bills. Make it personal, write that down. And, and just look at that for a second. You know, and, and, and Susan, I didn't ask you this because there's some people around the world who are listening to this and brand new and don't know you or your story. Um, how many years have you been in isogenics? 17 years. 17. And can you just tell me your last year's income just so that they get an idea? Because I want to put a face to what follow up is. I mean, you've mastered this, but you've gone through the horrendous part of it. All right. But what is your, what was your last year's income? I know you don't, don't like talking about it. A disclaimer I, is Susan's. Go on. I'm not, I'm not actually going to answer that. Um, because what I'm most proud of is that our team has produced 47 millionaires. There you go. I love uh, it. That's, that's enough. That, what that's I, enough. what I will say is that, um, you know, it, I think that, and it's not to be disrespectful, David, I just don't like talking about it. No, no I, I get it. I get it. But I mean, the fact is you're a seven figure income earner and I want people when they're putting this in context for their own mind, if they want what you have and what Abby has, Abby's sitting in a hotel room on vacation during COVID where the kids are in the pool right now, you know, and making a significant income because of the journey with follow-up. And I, I'll put it down if she, neither one of you had, had sort of, and I wouldn't say mastered the skill because if we're being truly honest, you, it's not that you're mastering it, it's you're continually embracing it. And let's get to that mindset piece. And yeah. I'm gonna ask you this question, yeah. Yeah, David, there's, there, there are two things. There's no mastery in this because this skill has two parts. There's the 
emotional aspect and the physical aspect. The landscape changes. So as Abby said, she might DM someone 20 times. We weren't DMing people 17 years ago. We were picking up the phone. Um, the, the landscape continues to change with social media, with technology, with automated systems, all sorts of things. The, the landscape changes. So no one can master something in an ever-changing landscape. But what you can master is yourself. You can master the person in the mirror. And Abby and I want to give you a visual because let's just face it, when you go to get into follow-up mode, you have to think of yourself like the queen of follow-up in your little universe or the king of follow-up. So Abby. <laughs> yeah. You are... Boys and girls. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I want you to go there, but you have to let me know. How did you both end up with exactly the same crowns? Was this something you both have at home? Or what, how did this come about? Where, where did the crowns come? Just, that's my mind just asking the question. Or oh, you're not going to tell me. We, we, because we followed up. <laughs> we earned it. We earned this crown. <laughs> Love it. Yes. I just might wear it all the time. Abby's going to wear it at the pool. Like... <laughs> You're, you have to think of yourself like the queen or king because it's a posture. When I was living in my little apartment in Toronto, when I was following up with my headset and my son was sleeping in a laundry basket, I would put on a whole damn suit and a pair of high heels and I'd walk around with my headset phone. This is before cell phones like we have them now. And you would have thought that I was in a corner office on Wall Street because I was the queen of my little two bedroom apartment in Toronto and I was the follow up queen. And that's what you, you know, go on Amazon, order your TR girls, boys, you know, boys wear TRs too. Order whatever you need to get into that peak state and get your follow-up groove on because that's what you have to do. Yeah, you know, and if we go back to Jimmy Smith, who some of you may not know, uh, Jimmy's 92 now. He joined IC when he was 74. Um, uh, he, the legacy of the Smith family is, is something, if you don't know it, find out about it. He was a butcher for 40 years. His posture, he calls it smiling and dial in. So he stands up, he puts a great big smile on his face and he starts to call. And that's that energy, it's that, and that's what we're talking about. It's not just posture, is it Susan it's, it, and Abby? It's, it's an energy, it's a feeling, it's a, it's a decision. And if you're slouched over in the chair and your mind's full of negativity, it's very, very hard. That phone becomes so heavy or that text message becomes so heavy. Abby, talk about the crown on your head. How does that make you feel as far as whether it was there or not, when you're following up, how do you do the, how do you put the crown on without physically putting the crown on. Talk about that, that mental process. Yeah, so I literally lift myself up and think about why I do this. I honestly, every time I go to follow up and put on that follow up crown, it's getting out of my own head and into my heart every single time. It is, this is not about me. This is, I have a gift for somebody that they don't know exists yet. It is not about me. It's uncomfortable. And I, I get excited because I think about what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that I'm in a hotel room right now and that if I'm going to do follow-up after this call, I get to do that. I'm grateful that Isogenics has given me a financial vehicle and an opportunity to be 100% present with my husband and kids that are down at the pool and to be able to share life-changing nutrition and a life-changing income opportunity with people at the same time. So I make sure that I'm when I'm going to follow up when I get in the zone, when I pull out my penny and I do all of my follow-ups that I am literally coming from a place of, I'm so freaking grateful that I get to do this, that how dare I not show up with that passion and excitement and energy, regardless of what that person comes back at me with. It's really showing up. If you can practice, Susan, I got this from you, the gratitude, really changing your energy was showing up in gratitude you're going to show up the way in how you follow up, whether it's through a DM or it's on a phone. People can feel your energy. They can. It's so true. Well, and energy is contagious. And, you know, I mean, I always say people, we're either affecting people or we're infecting them at all times. We either infect people with our negative, low energy, or we affect them with our positive light energy. And it brings up a question for both of you. This idea about, you know, <clears throat> when you're not in the mood. You know, I mean, there may, there may be times where, you know, something's going on and you're not really there yet. Do you 
do you trigger the crown or do you just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this in an hour. I'm going to go and do something else. I'm going to distract myself for a little bit. Or do you, can you trigger the crown? And the second is, because it fails over and over and over again. And I mean, Jimmy Smith says this, and I love quoting him. He says, this is the only profession where we can fail. What does he say, Susan? Like 98% of the time and still succeed. You know, because we're going to get disproportionate amount of no's versus yeses. So the question would be about how it how you fail continue to fail let's say if we use that word um you know when follow-up um um uh when follow-up failed but the other part is you know how do you trigger your crown or what do you do if you're really not in the mood well let's uh i want to i want to give some credit to carol taylor i learned this from her so i asked carol when she first got started her first 90 days how many appointments did she have every day? How many people did she reach out to to get those appointments? And how did she get herself into that mindset? And she said, Susan, the night before I was reaching out to people, I wrote down three reasons why isogenics might benefit them. And because I wanted to, you've mentioned Jimmy Smith, who's, who's absolutely amazing. I wanted to get in that mindset of how do you reach out to a Jimmy Smith? He was in another company. He was making about a quarter of a million dollars a year. And she said, I wrote down three reasons why it could benefit him and his family. So when you're reaching out from that place where you're not thinking about, as Abby said earlier, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about how can this benefit that person your come from and what people feel from you is entirely different. And that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is perfection is a form of procrastination. When you say, I'm going to do it in an hour, you're not going to do it in an hour. You know, that's a load of crap. You're not going to do it in an hour. So you just need to do what we call AIC, which is your ass in a chair. And you just get down to business and you do it. One of the things we teach is that if you could spend 90 minutes a day on your isogenics business and you were doing three key activities, and that was you were reaching out to people, you were booking appointments and essentially following up with people that, you know, over the course of a year, you'd have a very, very significant business. And even if 90% of the people, David, to your point said no, to give you some numbers, to recruit my first 80 people, it took 80 people for me to um, generate my first um, million dollars in commissions. It, I reached out to 800. Yeah. And I've kept daily notebooks of every conversation I've had for 17 years. So, you know, are you willing to reach out to 800 people to bring in 80? No, you might not make a million, but you'll definitely make some revenue. And it's probably more. There are so many people on Wall Street or Bay Street in Toronto or whatever who would almost sell their soul to get a $10,000 raise. And we have something here where everyday folks are making that level of money, you know, an extra $800 a month that is paying their bills. So, you know, guys, if you're here, you have something very special and unique. The re how you put your tiara on is you have the kingdom. You've been given the keys to the kingdom. It's up to you to get to work and you do it when you don't feel like it. Abby, you know, when you're pregnant, if you've ever been pregnant, uh, between us, we have nine children, Abby and I. If you've ever been pregnant, there are a lot of times you would rather eat chips or ice cream or poutine or whatever is your jam that you want to eat and you don't feel like it. And you're like, well, I don't have a weight loss story because I don't have an eight pack of abs because I have a big one pack and you know, it's a nine pound baby, but I've gained 47 pounds. That was me every time. Do it anyway. Stop putting yourself in the equation and being so selfish and be selfless and focus on others. Wow, and nine babies, and one still, you know, we're still percolating one there. <laughs> so, Abby, jump in on this, because it's such an important thing, and it's worth failing. I mean, I don't even like the word. I don't like using it. Um, you know, we all have different ways. Of, once we work with our mind, I don't look at anything I do as failing. I do look at it as learning. I do look at it as experience. I look at a lot of things, but only because I keep going. You know, I don't hit, I, I went, but, but a lot of people see that as failure. They, their failure becomes the thing that they start to focus on um, versus, you know, the journey itself and getting better and the improvement, all this kind of thing. And that's why so many people will slip away. They don't quit network marketing. Mm -hmm. they, they, they slide out the back door with their head down and they don't call you and say, guess what? You know what? Because if they did call and a leader like either one of you, you're going to say, okay, let's sit down. Let's, what, what do we need to work on? Let's help you get better at this one thing that you're struggling with, but people don't generally do that in our profession. So Abby, talk about this whole word failure and failure in the follow-up. What does that mean to you? 
Well, so I just have to say I'm on fire listening to you, Susan, and that there is a big difference between somebody failing and quitting and resting. And I think that it's really important for people to get clarity around that is that it's okay for you to slow down and rest at times if needed, but that's where you have to check yourself and say, am I using this as an excuse? Is this my ego speaking? Or am I really giving myself some time to slow down? Because a lot of times the slowing down leads to lack of results, not plugging in, not communicating anymore, not reaching out to your sponsor, your upline, your mentor, the person you work with, and essentially completely disappearing. That is very different than saying, hey, Abby, I just need to rest for a little while. Awesome. Still continue with your daily activities, just do it slower. But I wanted to also, David, I wanted to touch upon when I don't feel like doing things, why I do, because it's, I feel like I just had a full circle moment doing this with you. I'm so honored to be here with the two of you is that one time I heard this beautiful lady on a stage when I first started say, every day I look in the mirror and I say, would I follow me? And if my team did everything that I did, what would my organization look like? And that's the exact thing that every time I don't feel like doing something, I don't feel like showing up. I say, okay, would I follow me? if I choose not to do that. And if I don't do it now, am I actually going to do it later? Because usually procrastination, like Susan said, leads to me not doing it. And if my team did what I did daily, so if my team hit these moments where they don't want to follow up, they don't want to show up, they don't want to put their crown on and show up, if they don't do it because I'm not, then what's my organization going to look like? So I always took a lot, I take a lot of responsibility and when I don't feel like doing something, is it because I really need a rest and I will do it later? Or is it my ego and me saying, mm, one of my least favorite things to hear right now is it's just not in alignment with me right now. Just doesn't feel good right now. I'm like, sometimes things never feel good, but you do them anyways because you want results that you've never had before. Like when I don't feel like following up with somebody, I, rem I remember why. I take them off because it's right. going to stop. I remember <laughs> When I, somebody asked me when I first started what my goals were and I remember when someone asks me what my goals are I remember what my goals are so that when I don't feel like showing up I remind myself that I said I wanted this I said that I wanted to be full-time with my husband I said that I wanted to pay off our credit card debt I said that I was committed to paying off our student loan debt so then when it comes down to every day when life is crazy and things don't always look the same and I don't feel like showing up and I don't feel like doing anything, it's out of integrity for me to say I want X, Y, Z and then choose not to show up because it doesn't feel good in the moment. So I just have to thank you, Susan, because I do. I teach my team that every single time I speak and I every day say to myself, would I follow me? And if my team did what I did daily, what would my organization look like? And I feel like that's uncomfortable for a lot of us to do, but I challenge everyone to ask themselves that because if it does make you uncomfortable, there's an amazing opportunity for growth there. There's amazing opportunity for when you look in the mirror to say, okay, how can I step more into my power and more of what's possible for me? I don't even know if I answered the question, but I Drop have. Drop the mic. What did you answer the question? It was brilliant. Well, I mean, look at I, Susan and I are both like, Wow, we could we could just push end right now, Susan. I do want to jump in on that. I, I could feel that maybe you want to say something to that, but no, I I think that the biggest thing and and thank you, Abby, for that is you know the most important person we have to recruit every morning is ourselves. And um, Abby, to your point, there are a lot of things that we say, oh, we're not in alignment with, but we do it anyway. Let me, you know, the person who has the fourth shot of tequila on a Friday night and they know they shouldn't or they're Netflix and chilling or they're skipping their workout. You don't say, well, I'm not in alignment with, you know, not being lean right now. So I'm just going to Netflix and chill and eat three bags of chips. So the, the reality is, and David, you said this once, success is very inconvenient. 
And if we look at the numbers right now, we look at the economy, we look at how much people have in savings, we look at um, how many people, going back to my beginning points about how many people have a side hustle, especially millennials, just to pay their bills. And if people are delusional enough to think things are going to get better just by themselves, they're not. Um, Jim Coover once said, when we were back in the, the Great Recession, we create our own economy. And I firmly believe we create our own economy. And, and Isogenics provides us with a vehicle to do just that. Is it a lot of work? Yes, the climb is tough, but the view is freaking amazing. <laughs> Drop the mic, both ladies. Okay, um, I wanna, before we change subjects, um, I wanna just, because Abby, you said something right at the very beginning to me, right before we, we just push record about, you know, everyone wants the how-tos. What they don't realize is how important the mindset is. And they're always looking for, just tell me how to do it, what to do. And it's really what we just talked about for this last half an hour, for me is the critical part is how we're, you know, the belief system internally right between here. But let's just touch a little bit. If we ask you about the how-tos without spending too much time there, what are the how-tos of follow-up? What, what is the sort of down and dirty version of what people, what they think they're, so, oh, they didn't tell me what to say or how to do it, right? So but let's not skip over that in case someone's gonna use that as their excuse right now. But why don't we start with you, Abby? What is the sort of the how-tos of follow-up, if you can? So the how-tos is reaching back up out to someone to whether just genuinely connect with them, check in and see how they're doing. A lot of my follow-ups, like right now, if there's a promotion going on with Isogenics or if there's something in the works, I'm going to reach out and follow up, say, oh, there's free shipping right now. Are you interested in having a conversation again? The actual follow up, like scripting is saying to them, I have, I'm here, I'm still here. How are you? Are you ready to have another conversation? Are you ready to talk about that? Has anything changed in your life? That's like the how to, I assume, and I, I feel like everybody's looking for that perfect script. And while scripts are amazing and they're so important in network marketing because they're duplicatable, it's not the script that is the most important part because we can give you the script. I can tell you exactly what to say to all 10 people you're going to follow up with today. But the fact is, is how you follow up with them is not going to be dependent upon the words that I give you. It's going to be dependent upon your belief and your passion and energy actually following through and doing it. Mm. We can give people the exact how to's and all of the scripts. And David, it reminds me of when you stand on stage and you say, I'm 99% sure I want to marry you. I want someone who's hundred percent sure. So it's really when you follow up with somebody, what you say it is important. I'm not going to say that what you say isn't important, but what's even more important, I believe, and that I found in my build is the certainty and the passion and the excitement of how I show up and the consistency of I'm still there when they're ready. Because I feel like so many times people do a great job when they first come into Isogenics. They reach out, they do follow up, they're there. And then when they don't see the results that they think they should see in the period of time that they believe they deserve success, they stop and all those follow-ups never happen. But guess what? Most of those people end up joining Isogenics and it breaks my heart when the person that introduced them and maybe followed up once and then disappeared and then someone else followed up and they were ready to get started. I want to shake people and say, you have to stick around long enough and follow up enough times for the fruits of your like harvest to actually come to fruition, for that bamboo tree to actually shoot up. You have to stick around long enough because that follow-up is where everything magical will happen if you are around long enough. <laughs> Well, it's interesting you use the term bamboo tree, because if you understand how a bamboo tree grows, and maybe this is why you use that term, you know, when you plant a bamboo tree, and I have bamboo trees all around the front of my property, you know, they can stay dormant underground for year after year after year after year after year. You know, and a lot of people are like that. You know, we have so many examples of leaders in our company right now who are seven figure income earners that said no for years <laughs> or, or 20, 30, 40 times, you know, but certainly over years. But a bamboo tree, once it breaks the surface, right, um, will grow 10 feet in the first year. 
and can grow 60 feet. You know, it's, it's this crazy kind of analogy you use. And I'm not sure if you used it for that reason, but it's, I love the analogy. So Susan, let's talk about that, sort of the how-to part of this portion of follow-up. Just be, so I really want to get your sort of thoughts around that. Absolutely. The, the first thing I want to say to everyone is that our results financially are directly related to how we value our time. So if you want to be a millionaire, you need to value your time at $500 an hour based on a 40 hour work week. Um, and, and it comes first, the value comes before the actual result. And the reason I start with that, um, because of in terms of tactics and the how to's, you need to show up as though your time is valuable. You're not begging people. Jimmy Smith says, a man or woman convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. You're not dragging people. So I wanna give three quick tips. Number one, you need to know the statistics of people's reality. So if we look in North America, 69 plus percent of people are overweight and obese. Um, student loan debt in the United States is almost $1.7 trillion. Um, the list goes on and on. In Canada, um, I believe the average Canadian and over the age of 55 has something like $180,000 Canadian to retire. It's not enough. The average Canadian spends the last 10 years of their life in illness. If you only knew those statistics I just gave you, one could easily assume by the law of probability, the person that you're talking to doesn't have enough money to retire. They're not as healthy as they want to be. They, if they're depending on their age, they have student loan debt. And why are you worshiping false idols? Why are you putting people on a pedestal and assuming Everyone has all the money they need and all the health they need and the relationships are so juicy and they're so fulfilled because statistics say otherwise, you're not a friggin' fortune teller. Okay, so one, know the statistics. Number two is you need to pre-qualify people because of your time. So when I'm talking to people and let's say Dave and I are chatting over a glass of wine, he's like, I'm kind of tired or I've got a, you know, I, I just have this spare man tire. I don't like it. I'm going to say to him, on a scale of one to 10, David, how serious are you about doing something about that? Because, and, and, and I'm going to, if he says a five, I'll say, well, that's a pity, honey, because I only work with people who are eight or higher because I know I can get them results. I don't have time for posers, for tire kickers. I don't have time for that in my life. I don't, I don't tolerate that for myself personally. I'm a yes or no person. I commit or I don't. Um, and it's a standard. We don't get our goals. We get our standards. So I pre-qualify people. And the third thing, and, and Abby and I can get into some, some high-level skills and tactics, after they're pre-qualified, then I'm going to ask them the question. I'm going to say, well, David, what else have you tried to get these results? How much money do you think you've spent over the years? What I want to do is I want them to talk themselves into isogenics and not talk themselves out of it. So um, where this came from, David, when I was um, the top producing sales manager in the world for Bally Total Fitness, I designed an eight-step closing system for my staff. And so this, this closing system involved a series of questions just like that. You know, what are your goals? What have you tried? How much have you spent? It was so successful. We tripled our revenues and the president of the company flew up from Chicago to Toronto and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I designed an eight-step closing system. I'm teaching these people how to sell. So when I came into Isogenics, even though it took a while for me to hit my stride. Eventually, all of those things, those systems and all of those things for follow-up, they became, um, I guess, more relevant as I refined them and tailored them here. And so value your time, pre-qualify people, know your statistics and ask the questions. Allow that person to talk themselves into doing this. You mentioned something there, which I wanna to touch on. Because closing, I mean, everyone, lots of people have this weird thing, like follow-up, closing, closing someone, right? And I've heard people, they like to change the word. I open people to the opportunity, right? Yeah. But can we touch on closing, on, on the fact that we followed up, and there's that moment of decision where, you know, someone is, you know, you've, you've continued to follow up. Can we just touch on that? And I'll start with you on this one, Susan. Just can you just describe what that closing process really is and give someone an idea of how it kind of looks for you when you're at that point? And when, when do you know you're at that point? And what do you do to get to that point? Absolutely. So the, the first thing I want to say is before you start 
saying anything about isogenics, you have to identify the person's pain point. Um, if you don't know their pain, you don't have any leverage. All sales, I don't care if you are selling a $10 million custom software build or you are selling a 30-day basic system, all sales are about someone choosing to move from pain to pleasure. What your job is and your only job is, is to show them how isogenics is the thing that is going to move them from the pain to the pleasure. So number one, you need to know what their pain point is. Number two, you begin to ask those questions. So how long have you been feeling this way? Um, what, uh, what else have you tried? Who else, this is my favorite one, who else in your life is suffering, David? Because, and you speak their pain back to them because you don't have the energy you wanna have, you're not sleeping. How is that affecting your relationship with your kids, right? How is that affecting your relationship with your partner? And then you begin to ask these questions, and the next thing is, uh, you know. I just want to jump I know you're on a flow, but look at Abby taking notes. That's what I love <laughs> about great leaders. And I've watched you both do it now, but I just want to point that out. I know it's changed the screen so people can see you doing that. Here she is taking notes during the training. That's what's great. Anyway, sorry, I just jumped in. I hope you can remember where you were. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so the, um, the next part of this is. A, it's two words. And so this comes from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which I'm certified in. And the, the two words are these, what if? So I'd say, David, so what if you could really shift that for you? And what if 30 days from now, you could be sleeping better, you could have more energy, you could be a better father to Cal and Ben? So what would your life look like if 30 days from now it was radically different and you had, now this is important, all of the energy you wanted, the best sleep you had had, and you felt amazing. And then you shut up and you let them speak. And then you say, well, David, I guess my question for you is, would you be willing to spend $20 a day for 30 days to radically shift your reality? Hmm. And the reason I always break it down into that daily price is because people, when they're thinking about what they spend on a daily basis, whether it's Starbucks or Tim Hortons or, you know, whatever it is they do, the average person is spending that on in some way, shape or form, you know, whether they're grub hubbing or whatever they're doing. So breaking it down. So I've just presented a value pack. I didn't get into um, Vitamirs. I didn't get into adaptogens. I identified David's pain and I showed him for $20 a day how it could be a gateway out. And if he says, well, that seems like a lot. And I'd say, well, David, would $15 be more palatable for you if we could make some shifts? Maybe not as radical as the $20, but if we can make some significant shifts, would $15 work? And then you can always back down to 10, but now you've gone basic, premium value, you've presented it. And so the, the biggest mistake I see people make, this is the number one thing, and Abby talked about the ego, which um, Wayne Dyer, he was a friend of mine, and he always used to say ego stands for edging God out. So when your ego is in the mix and you're making it about the perfect things to say or to Abby's point, the script or whatever, you're making it so much about you. Just stop thinking with your head and start leading with your heart. Find the person's pain. Show them how we can take them to pleasure and then provide the daily options. It's as simple as that. Don't make it more complicated. Yeah. Uh, Abby, I want to bring you in in a different mindset. I always think about that brand new person listening. And... Everything Susan said sounds great because you know of her experience and she has put the years and the conversations in. So she's built the ability to be able to sort of think that way. With that new person, when it comes to this, you know, obviously we talked about the mindset, the follow-up, the importance of that. I love the fact you led with integrity. For me, that's the most important thing. I tell you, I'm gonna follow up with you. Guess what? I'd rather die than not, right? But the question is that when we talk about closing, from that new person's mind, can you sort of give us a, another angle or how you approached it when you were new? You know, because obviously you have in, immense success now, but th that wasn't like day one. You didn't come out the gate with what you've got right now. You didn't have this confidence and this vibrancy or this passion. I mean, you didn't have that clarity or the skill set. So just take us back when someone's brand new and they wanted to get to that point of closing. What's your suggestions to them? So I have to be completely honest and transparent as Susan is going through exactly what she asked, the qualifying questions. I'm going, yes, 
Yes, because when I first started, I plugged in to what the leaders were doing and I started it and I was messy. But to this day, and I'm not financially tied to Susan, I'm not on her team trainings all of the time, but her qualifying questions are almost identical to what I ask six years later. I'm just not quite as messy. They're still messy. But if you're brand new, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's seeing these incredible leaders that you look up to and listening to them on repeat, asking these questions, replaying what Susan just asked and getting really good at asking those questions. I don't remember who it was when I first started. It was asking the questions that normal people don't ask each other. So it's really breaking down and not feeling weird asking someone who shares with you that they're looking to release 20 pounds and asking them, how do you feel when you look in the mirror? Asking them, how does that affect your relationships in your life? Asking questions that a lot of people would say, ooh, I don't want to go there. But when you're human and you show up with that humanness and you truly do care about the people that you have a solution to serve, you start to dig deep and ask those questions that the average person doesn't ask them day to day so they can start thinking about what this really could do for them. So I wish I could say I have a different angle for somebody brand new, no, but it, I was hope I was hoping literally, no, I, I was hoping you didn't. Right? And be, because what the idea about the duplication part of our, right. our business and what I love is that you aren't financially linked. And I didn't know that either. I thought you were, but this is what's beautiful about our profession. If we went back to the opening 90 seconds, you know, the fact that people who aren't financially linked, you know, uh, help and and Susan's played a uh, you've said that to me right before she got on the call and during the call twice now where you've mentioned Susan's influence on you and your success and how you've been able to provide for your family so I, I love the I love the fact I love the transparency of that um, so as far as follow-up there, there are three other things I want to touch on before we get to the end of this training but is there anything you want to add is there last pieces of the follow-up puzzle or if I put you on the timer and I said, you only have 60 seconds right now to, to share the importance of follow-up, you know, however that looks, I just want to hand it back to you both to sort of tie a bow on follow-up. So especially those people sitting there right now that aren't doing it, that, that they want the things you both have, but they're, 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 they're hitting that follow-up wall. They're getting weird. They're not understanding what it really is. They're not understanding what's going on up here. But what is the last thing you want to say to them regarding follow-up? Sure. Okay, go ahead, Abby. Yeah, go. <laughs> I was just going to say from, it just keeps coming to me, from a social media standpoint, I have to share this when it comes to follow-up, is that I think sometimes we don't understand how important the consistency on social media is actually a massive part of our follow-up. Mm. So it's how we so we've had that initial qualifying conversation we have absolutely presented everything and they just weren't ready so now between that qualifying connecting presentation and the actual closing following up piece it's how do you show up on social media are you consistent are you the person that's there are they seeing that you're still doing what you said you were doing long after that conversation took place because that is such an important piece. However, it only works if you're also staying connected and you're reaching out and still following up via whether it's a phone call, whether it's a text message, whether it's a DM, because you want them to see that you're not going anywhere. You want them to see what you're creating. You want them to see that you are standing in integrity with what you've aligned with and what you said that you could offer them. And that you're also making those touches and connections with them following up all of the time. And anyone that is liking your content on social media that isn't already anisogenics that is commenting. If you're not taking that as an opportunity to follow up with them, you're totally missing the free marketing that we have in the lead generation of social media. So I would just say that the follow up and I, Susan's I'm sure going to tie this with a beautiful bow. The follow up is so important, but I never want people to not focus on to how you show up in your life and how you present yourself on social media, whether you post one time a week and you think that people are going to see what you're doing because you don't think you need to show up daily. I would challenge you to figure out why it is you feel that way. And what is it about not surrendering to the process of showing up? Because 
when I said yes to Isogenics and I was presented with a social media system, it told me to post three times a day, which was so uncomfortable for me and it felt icky, but I did it anyways because the person that introduced me, Joanna, I followed her on social media for years before mm -hmm. I said yes to her. I didn't like, I didn't comment. I wasn't even in her lead list, I'm sure. And I always think about what if she hadn't shown up the way that she did? What if she just didn't feel like she needed to show up every day? And then I wouldn't have seen that. So again, I just challenge you to think about, I know social media is changing. I know that it might not be the same it was six years ago, but really create some clarity around that follow-up piece. What are people seeing that you've had conversations with? How are they seeing you show up in between those beautiful, con the actual personal contact you have with them? I would just challenge you to really get clear on that. Awesome. Susan? Abby, that's beautiful. That, that consistency piece, right? Because prior to social media, one didn't have to be as transparent. Um, you know, and now how you live your life is part of your follow-up. I hope everyone wrote that down, what Abby said. One of the questions I get asked a lot, and I know Abby does too, I don't want to bother people. What should I do, right? So my biggest tip for you is to make a list of five qualities that you're seeking in business partners. I mean, how many of you would love to enroll Abby, integrity, heart, committed, consistent, driven, self-motivated, the list goes on and on, right? So make a list of the five qualities. If someone has three, four, or five of those qualities, you never stop following up, ever. One of the things Abby and I know is we could teach anyone skills, but we can't give them heart. And so don't, you know, you, you, I, I would just say you're not bothering someone if you are relentless in your follow-up because you realize that you have a gift to give them. And if you don't think this is a gift, I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. Look at the world statistics. Last year, McKinsey came out with a report that said by the year 2030, 800 million jobs would be displaced by AI and machine learning. Of the jobs that were displaced in 2020, I'm going to tell you right now, many of the companies aren't going to bring them back. They are going to replace them with technology. And I know this firsthand being in the trenches in technology and studying at MIT. And so the thing I would say to all of you is we are coming into a time when accountants, teachers, x-ray technicians, people who previously would have had six-figure salaries might not have jobs and you have something that can change lives and save families, don't be selfish. Mm -hmm. Just follow up, live your life, as Abby said, be consistent. So I love that. Yeah, Abby, I want to talk about that, the sort of the mindset of the gift. I, let's, let's just go there because you brought it up, Susan, and just said, uh, you know, I, I know it's something you and Susan had talked about. Uh, bring that to life for me. Let me understand what it, when you, when you hear those words, the mindset of the gift, what comes up for you? So before I share, can Susan, can yes, you just Car no, Car jump in, jump in, jump in. Can you share your gift example that you shared with me when we spoke before this about when you purchase someone a gift? Because that was such a light bulb moment for me that I, I know the whole world deserves to hear that before I even share. I hope I remember what I said. <laughs> um, was she the, drinking red wine? <laughs> no. <laughs> when you purchase somebody a gift and you can't get, a, you can't get together with them, what do you, what do you do? Well, you know, thinking about, thinking about gifts and hopefully this is in alignment, Abby, with what you're thinking, because if not share it and take credit for it, when we're, you know, we're, we're giving, we said it's messy people. We said it's messy. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving people a gift. I think two things come to mind. One is often we spend more time thinking about the wrapping than actually the quality of the gift, right? So that's the first thing that comes to mind about gifts. The second thing that comes to mind about gifts is often we think about a person's initial reaction, but we don't think about the long-term impact of a gift that we give them. And, um, you know, and, and really and truly when I think about isogenics and I think about this gift that we have, we all get the same brown box. It's not wrapped 
particularly pretty. It's a standard brown shipping box, right? That has some words on it that when you're new, they don't really mean a lot. But the long-term quality of what is within that box, it changed Abby's life. She and her husband might not be having this little boy right now because kids are expensive. When we had two kids, um, I wanted another child and Chris said, we can't afford it. And my big why, and I said, Jenna, so I wanted to grow my family. I wanted to send my kids to the right schools. That $275 I invested to get that cleanse system, it changed my life and it, it changed my family's life. And so when we think about this as a gift, we've really got to think about the lives we change. And, and I know, Abby, that wasn't what I said, but maybe that was all perfect because I don't know. Like, I, I know we had that I, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question. Abby, what did Susan say? <laughs> What did I? It was such a light bulb moment. I love that you're so in alignment that you just share from your heart all the time. I feel that too. People ask me what I said. I'm like, I don't remember. So <laughs> you said that the follow up and imagine you have a friend and they told you exactly what their dream gift was. And I mean, it could have been anything. It could a crown. And then you purchase this crown for your friend, but then you just can't seem to get together with your friend. You keep saying, let's meet up so I can give you your gift. Let's meet up so I can give you your gift. It was such a light bulb moment for me because the solutions that we have in isogenics, we know people have told us that they need it. They have told us that they would do anything to feel better, to be able to play on the floor with their children or to feel more confident when they look in the mirror. We know we have that gift. It's just how many times are you willing to try to meet up with that person to finally give them the gift that you purchased them? It was just such an incredible analogy for me. Now. Right? <laughs> But it's so powerful because it's true. We we have gifts for people all of the time. We I, I'm a gift giver. I love to purchase gifts for people that I know are going to make their life better, make them smile, get them excited. That's no different than what I have in isogenics because I know most people desire a solution I have to offer. It's just how long am I willing to show up and share it with them and be relentless and keep sharing and sharing and sharing until they're finally ready to say, yes, let's get coffee. I'm ready. Yeah. And then I can so beautifully give it to them in a brown box. See, you were supposed to articulate that. <laughs> well, Susan, you. Now it can be our joint. <laughs> Susan, do you want to add anything to this whole mindset of the gift? Because I think it's such a, it's a beautiful thing for people. I mean, even that analogy right there, I haven't heard it. I've 16 years. I've not heard it articulated that exact way, but it's such a beautiful way to articulate the power of that brown box, you know, and the fact is, you know, if we, if we knew someone's, you know, this was the ultimate gift they wanted. And, and, and if we start with your statistics, Susan, that you've given so many right now of what the reality of the world is right now, I always say, you never know what's going on in someone's bedroom or their bank account, you know, their relationships or their finances. And those two elements, I mean, most of the world, the, I, I, and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching where I get to sort of see behind those two doors. And most people are struggling in those two areas with their relationships and with their finances. So I really love that articulation, but Susan, do you want to sort of, sort of tie a bow on this whole idea about the mindset of the gift? Sure. I, um, I'll tell you a story. I, I met this gal over the summer and um, we started a conversation at the spa and I followed up with her, followed up with her. I did two three-way calls with her and um, her husband was very skeptical. Eventually she came in and then she just started ghosting me. And, and so I finally got to speak to her and she said, well, I've talked to several people and no one's interested. And I didn't take it personally. I just said, I'm really curious, you know, you have something that, you know, someone's sitting there, she's a hairstylist, someone's sitting there and complaining, they're overweight or they're unhealthy or they're tired or they can't stay at home with their kids. And you have something that solves all of those things for them, but you can't make the connection. I said, sweetheart, it's because you're making this about you. And I said, what else is it you can physically do where no matter who sits in your chair, you can solve their pain? And that's my whole point. It doesn't mean I don't love her. It doesn't mean I won't work with her. But she's already given up after five or six or seven conversations. When you realize the gift you have, Abby's so talented, she could go make multiple six figures in corporate America. I would hire her any day in one of my companies. 
I have gifts. I can go make money doing other things, but there's not one thing Abby can do. There's not one thing I can do where we can change people's lives like this. And until you have that level of conviction, you know, sometimes it's, you're going to feel stuck. You're going to feel like you're bothering people. You're going to spend more time training than actually in the trenches doing. And how do you really connect with that level of belief? Borrow it. Get on the calls, as Abby said, attend the events, listen to the podcast, do whatever you need to do, hear the stories. Every team call we do, we start now with 15 to 20 minutes of victories. And one of my favorite questions is this, what have you paid for this year with your isogenics commissions? And on one recent call, this man, Howard Winston, he said, he's not even financially linked to me, just people show up. I, I'm a collector of people. Everyone's welcome. It's, it's all good. Howard said, I had a friend who lost her job and she suffers from anxiety and I paid her cell phone bill and her electricity with part of my commission. Wow. And imagine if Howard hadn't followed up with people, continued to build his business, that woman might not have a cell phone right now, which I know we sound like, oh, that's kind of bougie. No, in 2020, it's dangerous if you don't have a way to communicate with people and she might not have electricity. So get out of your head and just follow up with people. Yeah, awesome. I have to I, say. Yeah, carry on, carry on. I just have to add, I ha ugh, like I could be in I love it. <laughs> you just said and shared. And I just want to remind people that when you see anyone like Susan or myself training, that you guys, if I could like show you the person I was when I first started Isogenics and like what my life really looked like, and why I have the belief in posture that I have now. Like six months into my isogenics journey, my husband lost his job, the job that was gonna float our income while I made this happen. And I think about, I was so close to quitting then because I was scared because our family had no money. We qualified for state assistance. My marriage was on the rocks. Like it was not a pretty time in my family at all. And I think about, Gosh, if I had quit then because it was so hard, like it was hard. I didn't have money to get to events. I didn't have money to do anything, but I knew that I knew that I knew that I could make this work. I now think about, and I want you to get clear on this because I know so many of you are going through hard times right now. I know so many of you, it might be a financial piece or it might be you're a single mom right now and you have so many kids and situations and you feel overwhelmed and you're virtual schooling and you just can't figure it out. I want you to take a step back for a minute and think about not only what this can do for you, because I wish I could go back and just tell that Abby O'Neill, like, oh, it's all going to be okay, but that it's going to be such a ripple effect totally onto what Susan said about how I remember saying somebody could come offer me a $200,000 job in pharmaceutical sales, which was my dream career when I got out of business school and I wouldn't take it because that would only be me. That would be me being able to create a couple hundred thousand dollars a year for my family. And when I caught the vision of what network marketing and isogenics was, I said, nowhere else can I not only create that for myself, but I can help hundreds and thousands of people also create that same type of financial security, life-changing products. So when you're thinking about that gift piece right now, and you think about where you're at right now, and you might not have a lot of hardships right now, and that's okay too, I want you to think beyond yourself because because now six years later, I could cry thinking about the people that have told me they've released 100 pounds because of isogenics. Their marriages are improved because of isogenics. They've been able to leave an abusive relationship because of isogenics. We had an executive retreat this past summer and it brought me to my knees in tears sharing one of our executives shared and she meant it with all of her heart. She said, if it weren't for isogenics, then products are amazing. The financial opportunity is amazing. She said, but if it weren't for this community, and the fact that I am able to do the personal development, I don't know if I'd be here on this earth. And that right there was a moment for me that's not supposed to be a dark moment, but it's a reminder that we have a gift and you don't know what's going on in someone's life. I guarantee you looking back six years ago, nobody knew what was really going on in my life because I always smiled and it always looked great because I'm really good at hiding it. And I challenge you 
to just understand that when you follow up and you connect and you're showing up for yourself, that you're showing up for people that you don't even know the impact you can have in their life. And you'll never know unless you stick around long enough and follow up enough times to see that ripple effect. And then you get to a point where I could never stop. I could never leave isogenics. I could never get distracted by another shiny object like thing or a company that says this or an opportunity that says that because I'm so invested in what this has done for me and what I've seen happen. And if you're not there, like Susan said, borrow our belief because I promise this is life changing and it's so much bigger than even the brown box and the compensation plan and the community. It's all wrapped up together in a bow and you have that and you can change lives. Drop the mic again. What do you think, Susan? She's off. <laughs> okay. I got more goosebumps I can, I, can, I can talk about. Look, we don't have too long. Um, I want to talk about objections because so many people get caught up in it. But I want to just talk. There's two parts of it that fascinate me. I, I used to teach, like Susan, I was in the sales arena, and I used to teach cold call selling. And there were a couple of things, I, and I always understood there were five primary objections. No need, no time, no money, no hurry, no trust. No need, no time, no money, no hurry, no trust. You people that love to write, I'm going to say it one more time because I know you're in the middle of it. No need, no time, no money, no hurry, no trust. But the other thing I really understood, uh, because I was a cold call salesman, which means I didn't have time to build rapport, was the importance of finding the right person. And the second was, was following up with that person. And I always used the number 14. I always knew that 14 was the minimum amount of follow-ups that I would ever commit to as far as in a cold call situation. I'm not talking about following up for the rest of your life and staying and building rapport and relationships. There's certainly that follow-up process. But I want to sort of, and Susan, I'm going to start with you because you've been around the company so long. And when we talk about objections, and everyone gets excited when we talk about this, because they think they're going to write down that magic bullet, though. But can we, can we just first of all define what really objections are in your world? Let's start there, and then let's sort of look at how you do, how you've learned, because <laughs> this is an important distinction for both of you, is that you are learning and have learned, and as you talked about earlier, Susan, the world is, our business is constantly changing. So how we handle things is always changing. That's why we're never masters. We're continuous learners. But let's just go to that part, uh, Susan. When you're talking about objections to people, how do you define it to people? Sure. Yeah, and I, I've been in professional sales since I was 14 years old. And like you, David, I've done cold calling. I, I've run ads. I've done all sorts of types of things. But ultimately, objections come down to two categories. So I want everyone to write this down. There are how questions and there are why questions. So when someone has a how question, usually it will it, you have the word how in it. So this sounds really good, Abby, but I don't know how I'm going to do this when I've got four kids at home. Or this sounds really great, Abby, but I don't know how I can go two days without eating. How questions I'm going to just put over here. Why questions someone wants you to try and convince them. So when someone has a why question, I take a little bit more of a, um, I'd like to have fun with them. Um, I take a little bit more of a um, in your face kind of tactic, depending on the individual. But when someone says, well, why isn't this FDA approved? Then I, you know, my answer for that is because FDA doesn't approve foods and this is a food, but um, sometimes they'll ask a question that'll go like this. Where does the company source the Podiarco from in the natural accelerator? And I'll say something like this. I'll say, John, if I can get that question answered for you, on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about losing the 30 pounds you've told me you want to lose? Mm. And if he's like a five, then I'll say, well, John, I would invite you to search on the internet. Let me know when you're an eight out of 10. But if he's like, it's an eight or a 10, then I'll say, okay, great. So when I get that answer, that question ready for you, John, are you going to do the $20 a day, $15 a day, or $10 a day system? Because when someone's asking a why question, 
sometimes they're doing it as a stalling tactic. So I like to turn the tables and force them to give me a level of commitment. Because again, it goes back to Pareto's principle, 80% of your time with the 20% of people who are going to make you 80% of your money. If someone is asking a how question, now I want to dive in a little deeper. I might be a little softer with that person. Um, I use a lot of um, mirroring. So if someone is more abrasive, I might match them. If someone's soft, I might be softer. But it, let's say um, Dave, it says, well, Susan, you know, that sounds good, but I'm a foodie. I don't know how I can go two days without eating. So I'd say something like this, David, you mentioned to me, and I take copious notes as, as David mentioned, David, you mentioned to me, um, you're exhausted. You're not sleeping. You mentioned to me that you're not the father you want to be to Cal and Ben. Um, you also mentioned to me that, you know, you're, you're concerned because, you know, nothing you're doing is working. So let me ask you a question. Could you detox for four days out of 30 days if on the other side of this, you would be well on your way to having the sleep you want, the energy you want? You always want to be mirroring back to people whatever it is their goals are. And so that's how, that's how I respond to the questions. It doesn't matter what kind of objection it is. But again, identify, is it a how, is it a why? and then get their level of commitment. Even if it's network marketing, if, if you know, John says to me, well, Susan, I just don't do network marketing. And I, and you know, so what is he really saying? Is it a how or is it a why? It's a why, it's a why question. And so I'd say, John, tell me more about that. You know, what is your experience with that? Well, you know, you invite people to your home, they don't know what you're doing. Well, I'm curious, John, you said to me that you wanted to lose 30 pounds and you said to me, you're not the father you want to be. So I'm really curious if you had a solution that was 15, 20 or $10 a day and you could feel exactly the way you wanted to feel, why does it matter what vehicle it's sold through? Mm -hmm. Always respond to why questions with a question. <laughs> look, at, look at her reaction. <laughs> 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 so, I love it. Uh, she got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. It was because that's so simple. Abby, jump in because I, I know that as you're listening to this and, and you do it naturally. But what was it about Susan's comment just there that dropped the mic for you? Well, honestly, again, it's duplication is that I have listened to Susan for so many years and I'd be lying if I didn't say my overcoming object objections is very similar to hers. It is so similar, except for I just took notes on the how and the why question, because that's great. I didn't identify those before. But it really is saying, if I could show you a way to do that, or if I could get you that information, are you ready to get started? How committed are you? Oh, I just want to check on something. So you're telling me that you're an eight star, which means you're making, you know, a multiple six figure income, and you just learned something new on this little training. Is that what we just said? I and hope you just wrote us, it. Is you I just wrote no that matter, down? I, I do. I, will, I hope no matter how many stars people have, I hope that we yeah. all stay very coachable because I learn more from the brand new person sometimes than exactly. anyone. And the reason I said that, because you see, it's tongue in cheek, right? Is that yeah. that we're continually learning? Yeah. Um, so well, go back I, to the how. Sorry, go David. Susan. If I could jump in, the irony is. I wrote something down from Abby that she said that I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how does that even make sense? I think, I think the big thing everyone wants to understand is every day it's, it's Kanai, constant and never ending improvement. And so you're always learning, you're always growing, you're vulnerable, you know, and, and it doesn't matter if someone's doing something that's working, learn from them. I'm learning from Abby, you know, and, and it doesn't, it, you know, you can't have an ego here if you want to be successful. So I just wanted to jump in and say that, but I think it's hilarious that I'm making notes from what Abby said that I said. <laughs> Yeah, That's the exactly. first time ever. <laughs> uh, Abby, jump in on this objection piece. And I know, again, everyone's looking for the how-to part. And I'm happy that we do the how-to like Susan just did. But talk about your journey with objections. Because, again, the follow-up, uh, if you look at the sort of the why a lot of people walk out of the uh, Isogenic store, right? And it's that, that, that fear of, of, of failing or getting it wrong, you know, the fear of objections, the fear of rejection really is where it comes down to the fear of rejection, being rejected. Um, but and this objection part is where a lot of that starts, right? As someone feels like, you know, this whole part we've talked about today, which is the follow-up, you know, and handling objections, you know, and, 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 and 
talk to me a little bit about your journey with that, especially again, from the beginner's mind and how you've cultivated and, and grown to become someone who's not only confident, but still that beautiful student who's writing things down and say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start you know, practicing that, which I, I can see in your eyes, right? Yes. So I believe that, like we've been speaking about, a lot of the objections can actually be addressed before they even come up if you are asking a series of questions and qualifying people. If you're asking people how much do they spend every day on breakfast and lunch, you're pre-qualifying people for the objections we know we're going to get. So when then they say, that's too much money, I can't afford that, I remind them that they told me they were already spending $30 a day on average for the food that they're consuming. And I feel as though, because every objection is different. There is no handbook to exactly what to say when so-and-so says this. It's really practicing and having those conversations and getting better at it. And if you have some objections too, and you're new, what I was really great at doing is saying, if I can get you that answer, would you be willing to get on the phone with my friend, Joanna? If I could get you that answer, would you be willing to have me put you in a three-way message with David? To absolutely use, I'm not the expert. I, I use the tools. And a tool is also an incredible mentor that's been in isogenics much longer than me that can address the objection that I'm like, I have no idea what to say, I'm brand new. So then be coachable and realize you don't have to know the answer to everything at the beginning. Absolutely surrender to the process of a three-way call, a three-way message, bringing in that third-party validation for them to show you how they answer that over and overcome that objection for you so you can get better and then you can put it into action and practice yourself. But I really do believe going back to how I started is that a lot of the objections that we get, granted you will still get them, can be addressed if you ask those qualifying questions that like I said, mine are almost identical to Susan's are. That's why it's so important to be plugged into leadership in the company and know that it's there and available to you and it's free. You guys, like we have the most incredible mentors and leaders in Isogenics and they're willing to serve and give their heart. Like I look up to Susan for that. Her saying on this call, she has people on her calls. That she's like, oh, I know they're on our team, but they just show up. Like that is a true servant leader. That is someone that cares about the organization and the company as a whole and the industry as a whole more than just what their paycheck is. Mm -hmm. And when you can really, really tap into what other people are doing and have no ego, and start to just practice what they do. When I speak, does it sound like Susan? No, but I can listen to what she says over and over and over again, and then bring my own voice and have that same message delivered with my own abbiness. So you don't ever have to sound like me or like Susan or like David, but you can get really good at asking those same questions and then learning how to overcome those objections by either already getting the answer or then when you're new. Well, you say something, I'm sorry to interrupt him, but I want to say this because there are people out there right now listening who are just stepping in this door or right. who are not doing the do, let's say. They're, they're hanging around, but they, they're still sort of like, and again, excuse me if this sounds harsh, if you're listening, right? And you should be listening. Is this, you know, if you're making the excuses that, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're choosing out of this and maybe you're not intentionally choosing out of it, but, you know, who are you modeling right now? If you're hanging around negative people, I guarantee that your language and how you walk and how you walk into situations and the things you're willing to face and the, the life that you're leading models perfectly the negative people around you. What Abby just said, which I love so beautifully, is these two women are not financially linked. And I'm doing this because that's where they are on my screen. <laughs> they may be over there or there or there, wherever you are, right? But, but they, the modeling process is, why wouldn't you model a woman like Susan, who is an industry leader, who is an incredible mother, who's an incredible friend, who is a passionate and driven human being, who is adventurous and spirited and kind and contributes and changes lives, not only in, this, uh, in our profession, but outside of this profession. Why wouldn't I model? Why wouldn't I listen to the words that Susan speaks and embody them and, and, and model her and, and bring to life the abbiness or the Davidness inside of me 
by, by modeling someone that lives the life that I'm choosing or I would love to live. But if you continue, because right now you're modeling someone. So if, you're, if your brain, if your objection to yourself <laughs> is, oh, yeah, you're, you're just like, this is like so weird because you and uh, all that noise. Oh, well, guess what? I would much rather live a life it, it, modeling a Susan Sly or an Abby O'Neill personally than somebody who's living a life where they're living in the shadow of their own doubts and fears, right? Excuse me, I'm getting, I'm getting going here. Susan, I want to ask you a question about objections because we only have a couple of minutes here left. Um, this philosophy, and I'm not saying it's right, it's something I believe, and I'm, I'm happy if you don't and you say maybe it's wrong, but over my years, I've noticed that the objection that most people get is the one they have. So the internal objection that they have, so if they think it's too expensive, it seems like every single person they speak to, it's too expensive, right? Or if they have any other objection, it seems like it comes up over and over again. Do you want to talk a little bit whether this is the truth for you over years and all the people you've helped, or if that's, am I making this up? It's a, it's a brilliant question. And, and the reality is that, it's not just with objections. It's, it's wherever the disparities are in our internal world, they will be reflected back to us in our external world. So whatever our limiting beliefs are in any area of our life, they will, they will come back to us like boomerangs. So if, um, you know, in the beginning, I, I really had a limiting self-belief that I, um, I wasn't lovable. And so I attracted a lot of people into my organization who mirrored back to me that belief. And how did they do it? They came into the organization and they left. Or I had one woman say, when you say you love people, you sound so inauthentic. And I kept thinking, well, I really do love people. So when it comes to our objections, the ones we're getting the most of, I, what I would encourage everyone to do is treat it like a science experiment. Um, always replace your criticism with curiosity. And, and um, Dave Asprey, um, who I know is an amazing human, Dave is always talking about upgrading your life. So how can we ever upgrade something we can't quantify? Begin to write down the objections you're getting. If you get the same one three times or more, then guess what? There's something to work on within yourself. So David, to your point, if people are saying it's too expensive, do you find yourself going into drama and excuse like, oh, this is so expensive? No, you need to check that ego at the door. And like Abby said earlier, get back with why you are here. Um, in, in my humble opinion, coming from sales, I've sold things that are millions of dollars and I've sold a nine day cleanse. I've sold the whole range, right? And, and at the end of the day, if I'm getting the same objection more than once, I have to sit with it myself and say, I have to check in. How am I feeling about money right now? Do I have a poverty mindset or an abundant mindset? How am I feeling with the products right, right now? Am I excited or am I feeling a little flat? How am I feeling about the compensation plan? You know, right now I can tell you I am so fired up about it, but I'm not allowed to say under NDA why, but <laughs> I'm just super excited. Um, and, and it goes back to what I said earlier, the most important person we must recruit every day is ourselves. And I'll, I'll just leave my part with this. At the end of the day, I would encourage you to fire yourself every night and rehire yourself every morning. Start every day fresh and ask yourself, and I do this, sometimes I physically write it down, what am I excited about today? Right now, today, the day we are recording this show, I am so excited about the compensation plan. I am so excited about the opportunities for new leaders emerging. I'm so excited for the abundance of this company. Um, am I excited about shakes? Yes. Am I excited about detoxing? Yes. But the level of excitement I have about the compensation plan right now, I just can't shut up about it. Like I want to, if I didn't have another meeting, I'd be like picking up the phone and calling all my leaders and saying, I know something awesome is coming, but I can't tell you what it is, but you must be paid as executive, right? So I would say, figure it out every day. And, and how do you stay here almost 20 years? Because that's what I do every day. Mm -hmm. So ladies, we're at that magic hour. And I'm going to put you back on the clock. I picked up <laughs> my little thingy. 
because okay. it's that time, you know, it's not what happens on this call, on this show. It's what happens post, what happens as people are sort of ending this show right now and they're stepping away from their computer or their phone and they're stepping back into their life. And I thought what would be fun is if I give you 90 seconds to wrap this up in a bow and, uh, and I want you to use as much of it as you can, you know, and also you don't need to rush your voices to try and cram it all in. I want you to really think about what is that message that you want to leave these people with. We're in week four, you know, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about the power of events, uh, social media, and we've got a couple of real experts who can really help people with that social media piece. You talked on that and touched on that, Abby, about social media. So we can really sort of unpack that more and give people some what really works. And I, what I love about um, this, the, these two trainers is that the authenticity part is that really showing who they really are, the messiness of that. So that's coming. Um, you know, and you know, last week we talked about getting people paid, getting people started, you know, and that sort of journey. So here we are, you know, really focused on, and the reason I'm talking a little longer is to give you a second here just to get ready, but just, you know, this, this whole idea of, you know, the, the, the follow up, the messiness, um, you know, how we failed with follow up, you know, the, the mindset of that gift and of course, handling objections. So I'm going to put you on the clock. Who wants to go first? Abby. Abby, you're going first. You got 90 seconds to close this out. Abby, you're up. Okay, so I would say I am talking to you. Yes, you. And in case nobody has told you, I want you to know that I believe in you. I believe in your potential with Isogenics. And more than that, I believe in those dreams that you have on your heart. And I want you to get clear on what it is that you desire with your opportunity in isogenics. What do you really truly desire? What excites you? Why do you show up? Why are you here? And then I want you to make a decision, not I am going to, I will. I want you to make a decision, a committed decision that you are worth whatever it is that you desire. You are worth those dreams. You are worth those goals. That you have people like myself and other leaders across the company that are cheering you on and want that for you. And then I want you to know that I know it's going to be hard. That whatever is going on in your life right now, every single obstacle, every single no, every single thing that happens in your family that you have to overcome is literally a gift that you have been given that when you overcome and grow beyond is something that you can share that's going to allow you to become the best version of yourself and leader to have a ripple effect to change hundreds and thousands of lives that you don't even know possible yet. So I want you to know that going out of right now that I believe in you and I challenge you to believe in yourself to get crystal clear on that dream, commit to it, and then take every single obstacle as a gift and that you're grateful for it because you're going to overcome it, and then you're going to be able to help someone else overcome that same thing that you've gone through because you never gave up. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Go right on. <laughs> it's like 130, 77. She's like, no, oh, perfect. Thank you. And, and what a gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, like, again, you know, I could have given you 25 minutes to do that. Beautiful. Thank you. And no pressure on you, Susie. <laughs> but Susan, 90 seconds. Grab this one up for us. Abby, that was so beautiful. And, uh, and uh, in companion to that, I want, I want um, you, the person watching, I want you to think about your life five years from now. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you don't make any changes. You keep thinking the same thoughts you're thinking, the negative thoughts. You keep waking up in the morning and starting the scroll you keep thinking about how your life isn't where you want it to be. You don't have the money you want. You don't have the health you want. In fact, you live into the same habits you have now for the next five years. The question I have for you is, where are you going to be? And if you don't like that person, I'm going to challenge you to live into the woman or into the man that God destined you to be because you were destined for wealth, not poverty. You were destined for health, not illness. You were destined to have a fulfilled, beautiful, epic life. And as Abby said, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to roll up your sleeves. You're going to have to get to work. And I'll finish with this. 
in order to achieve something you've never achieved, you are going to have to become someone you've never been. Embrace the scary. Just go through it. On the other side is exactly everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe you do. Like 129.74. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Uh, this has been beautiful. Thank you for our week four of our six six week series. I have learned so much. I've enjoyed this. It's been so that hour and a half flew by so quickly. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Abby, that little baby, oh my goodness, we the all of our whole co our community is there with you and this little Lisa baby and your three daughters and they're, they're, I want you to go down in that pool and jump in that pool with them and just thank them for giving, uh, uh, sharing your time. And Susan, thank you again for everything you've always done and how you're always here. Whenever I call, whenever I ask for help like with this, you all, the first word that comes out of your mouth is yes. And, and you always add so much value. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love you both. And I, I, I'm so appreciative for everyone listening. Love you too. Thanks everyone. What can I say? Right? <laughs> I love I love the fact that Susan, you know, put me on the hot seat because that's truly what this is about. You know, I, I don't profess to have the answers to all things, right? I have experience. I'm old, right? I have experience. And because I've, you know, because I've climbed the ladder of success in the way I have, you know, I, I've handled a lot, a lot of different things. But I love the fact she turned that clock on me and forced me to answer those questions as well. But, you know, what I love um, for both, you watch the, 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 the respect, you know, you watch the love, you watch the, 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 the fact that each other is taking notes on each other, even though with all the success, all the success that they both enjoy, that they're such great students of our profession and so elegant and so different, yet so uniquely the same. Their heart, their passion, their charisma. Their, and, and remember, I love that Abby's truth about where she started and Susan's truth. I know her story. So, so accomplished, yet this profession's allowed her to step into a whole new world, which it will for you too. So again, remember what I said at the beginning. This isn't about what you heard. It's about what you do next. So this is so, so, so uh, important. Remember next week, right? We're at week five. Our guests are incredible. This is all around that whole area of social media, building on Facebook, building on Instagram. Uh, and building, taking the online relationship into the offline relationship. So again, really, really important. But let's, that's next week. What's important is what you do this week. What are you taking from this into your business now? And what are you duplicating? And remember, you're going to receive the recording of this event. What do you call it? A show, an event? You know, go back. Make sure you share this. Make sure you, 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 you duplicate like you saw brilliantly done between Abby and Susan. Even though they're not financially linked, you saw the power of duplication. You saw how often Abby's nodding. Yep, that's exactly what I do. You know, modeling greatness. Like I mentioned in the, in the, in, in, just a few moments ago, modeling greatness is really what this is about. Modeling someone who you respect. Modeling that, the way they think, the way they behave. Remember those three things I spoke about, the right vehicle, right time, right you. Right vehicle, right time, right you. So again, enjoy, and we'll definitely see you next week. And don't forget, this is all about results. This is all about what happens next. So go do it, and we'll definitely see you on the other side. Mm -hmm.